Hello everyone, I'm Emma Lavelle, uh, Director of Customer Success here at Unique. Uh, today I have the pleasure of interviewing Dylan Weymouth, who is the Tribe Lead for Group Business Operations at the Warehouse Group in New Zealand. For those of you watching this interview who are not from New Zealand, the Warehouse Group is the largest retail group operating in New Zealand, and one of the brands within the group is Noel Leeming, New Zealand's leading appliance retailer. In 2019, Unique and Noel Leeming embarked on a journey together to create a custom digital human called NOLA. Today, I'll be interviewing Dylan about NOLA, digital humans, and chatbots. So Dylan, thank you very much for joining us today. No worries, good morning, Emma. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so our first question uh, for today is just exploring a little bit into what interested you and in Noel Leeming um, to, in exploring a digital human team member for your organization. Yeah, look, um, the, the journey for us really began when we were designing the new store um, that was going into the flagship um, mall here in Auckland, um, the new Westfield Mall in Newmarket. Um, it was, the mall was pitched as being kind of a flagship mall um, for New Zealand at an international standard. And when we looked at what we were going to do um, with our store, we knew we needed to do something special. Um, one of the options or one of the opportunities that we were discussing at the same time was the um, digital human and the avatar that you can create using Unique um, and it sort of felt fitting that as part of our digital strategy for the store we would look at a um, digital concierge at the front of the store and that's kind of where it all kicked off and um, and it was fitting for you know our leading store to have something like that to um, welcome customers. Yeah fantastic and uh, where do you see the value for no leaming in investing in a in a digital human, more specifically in a custom digital human, because NOLA was custom designed um, mm. to the Nolaming brand. So where is the value for your organization in that investment? Well, I think for us, um, we, wanted to, we wanted to create a persona that embodied um, our brand. Um, I think we'll talk a little bit more about that, but we really wanted to um, produce a very high quality experience um, for our customers. So. You, you know, the, the new market mall, as I kind of described, it was going to be flagship and it is, um, and the store for us was going to be an innovation hub. Um, and so we wanted to put the kind of, in, in a way, the best of the best um, into that store, into that experience, so that customers could see um, that relationship between no leaming, innovating, and then the products and services that we sell. Um, so that brand, that brand affinity comes through by seeing and having that experience with, with that high quality execution. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And uh, talking about uh, brand and brand identity, how does NOLA embody your brand identity and strategy? Yeah, well, we went through a, a lot of workshops, you know, coming up with NOLA's look and, and, and her tone of voice and her personality. And really, we took um, a lot of you know, lean-ins from our team. We, we, we have a very multicultural team. And um, if you meet Nola, you, you know, she could be from anywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, we looked at um, a sort of professional tone of voice, which is in line with our brand, but also a bit quirky and a bit fun. Mm. Um, you know, people are quirky and fun. So, you know, and that's a good representation of our team. So her personality allowed us to kind of push the envelope of the brand a little bit, but also kind of have our, yeah, like all of our team have our own individualism as well. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And I know for our team, it was a, it was a great journey uh, creating that, uh, um, creating NOLA alongside Noel Eming. There's a lot that goes into it, much more than you think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's a great journey. So can you tell us what NOLA um, is currently focused on in that flag, flagship store? Yeah, so NOLA's role in the store is to um, work alongside our, our store greeters um, and introducing and welcoming customers to the to the new market store. Um, her key sort of functions are around navigating the store um, and then helping customers to find where certain products are. Um, but, you know, really, as I kind of alluded to earlier, it's about an experience. You know, we want our customers to engage with something that's really new and cutting edge um, and just walk away with, you know, maybe a question in their mind or, uh, maybe just uh, experience that they might want to share or, or, or you know, um, knowing exactly where to go to find their iPhone charger in the mm. store. Um, so, you know, we really have um, embarked on just trying to engage the customer. That was really yeah. the main um, objective. And, you know, Nola does lots of selfies. So that's that's another cool thing that, that customers walk away going, I just did a selfie with this digital human and 
Um, you know, they might have experienced a chatbot before, but this is different experience again. Um, and, at, and we have our team at the front of the store to support that interaction and, and to um, be there for the customer if they want a hand in interacting with NOLA or if, or if NOLA can't su support what they're actually trying to find out, then our team are on hand as well. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we'll move into the next section now. Uh, so um, within the last six months, actually, you now also have NOLA, the chatbot, uh, available online uh, to help customers. Can you tell us about the decision to brand your chatbot as NOLA and what value that brings to your organization and to customers? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, it was it was a no-brainer to to take NOLA online. I mean, she lost her job in the store during the lockdown. Um, and, because you know, our we stores had, had to close. Yep, yeah, because our stores were closed. Um, so, and that was for many weeks. So we, we sort of thought, I mean, the result of that was our customers were shopping online and we and calling our call center. So it was a sort of natural extension of the chat platform to, to take it onto the website. Um, but branding NOLA was a bit of a no-brainer for us because we have this digital um, digital human that is a, that's serving our customers in Newmarket. We might as well copy and use that um, online. Um, and I guess what it allows us to do, and we're, we're not really there yet, but I think we're, we're looking to venture there, is how does NOLA become more of a personality for our brand as part of our marketing to customers and as part of our the way customers engage? So, you know, there will be – some of New Zealand will have met NOLA in store. Some of New Zealand will have, will have connected NOLA being a, uh, someone they met in store to now a personality they might meet on the web. Um, but, you know, there's so much more we could do with taking that personality and, and creating a, a niche within the brand of, of um, how we communicate with customers and how customers – engage with us so it was just a small step in, in that direction yeah fantastic yeah and so now how do you decide which tasks should go to nola the chatbot versus which should go to nola the digital human uh, both now they, they currently have a, a list of jobs now but as you think about the future um how would you decide which tasks go to a chat nola the chatbot versus nola the digital human yeah look both channels um have unique um customer interactions. So you have to start with looking at what customers are actually engaging with both channels individually um, and, and then deciding within each channel, what are the problems that, um, that the bot can solve? Um, mm. So either the digital human or the bot online, um, and then just working towards building those, those conversations out, building those integrations out. Um, but we do find that the, um, if you had a scale between functional and, and, experiential so um i would say that the in-store one is is leaning far more towards experiential mm. and the online one is leaning far more towards functional i mean you don't really engage with the chatbot unless you kind of want to get something done um so the better that's online i'm talking so the better that bot can solve your problem then the kind of the better they are if mm. you walk up to a kiosk where there's a digital human smiling at you then you know, you could go anywhere with that conversation. You know, you're, mm. you're actually chatting to, to um, you know, a, a sort of digital avatar. You can, uh, there's, there's facial expressions, there's real voice. Uh, it's a, it is a totally different interaction than, than online. So they're both, both are developed with the same thinking in mind, but mm. um, what gets done and, and where we will take each is probably like individual streams in a, in a way. The only yeah. thing that's totally common across both is, the personality. So where we develop our personality and general FAQs, those those can be just totally shared to both to both experiences because it's it's wherever customers want to want to take them. It's the same. So yeah, that's quite Fantastic. good. And what uh, um, response have you seen from customers to both Nola as chatbot and Nola in store? Yeah, look, the um, as I sort of said, the online. Um, or the in-store experience um, response has been really positive. Um, from the word from the first day we opened, we had several hundred, if not thousands, of sort of um, hits every week. Um, hits being interactions with customers. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen a few thousand selfies get taken, and that just shows that you know that kind of journey is engaging people and having fun with people in that way. Um, online, um, we see you know massive um, spikes of of usage when when we're in um, lockdown phases or when the stores are closed 
um, or over promotional events. And we just see that as a, as a huge traffic diverter from our call center. So um, for us, that's uh, that, that execution is um, just an absolute no brainer and, and a huge win for us, especially when our stores were shut. Um, and we're looking to expand the capabilities of, you know, looking up your order or, um, you know, being able to initiate a, a repair, for example, um, those sorts of things are opportunities for us to actually develop out so that, yeah. that that bot becomes more and more useful rather than just sort of pointing you at the right place to go. Yes, yes. Yeah. So if we take a look at the future now, can you talk about some either roadmap or just vision uh, for NOLA's development um, and thinking about additional responsibilities uh, or roles that NOLA may pick up? Yeah, look, we're, um, we're excited to see NOLA potentially show up in more of our new stores um, whenever we open a new store. And it doesn't happen too often, but when we do, um, we think NOLA's, uh, NOLA could be a key part of, of that, that opening. Um, obviously, we, we see new customers, and that's a great opportunity to engage with them as well. Um, so that's from a physical point of view. And then using that um, execution to, to raise awareness of new products, um, allowing customers to um, find out more information about promotions and specials. So those are some of the things that we might look to explore um, in the digital physical execution. And then um, online, it's really about integration. So getting that bot to be able to do more um, for customers um, on the other end of the keyboard. Um, you know, you can, you can be working um, and chatting to a bot and solving problems like where's my order or booking things or whatever. Um, you can be doing that while you're um, doing other things, and that's what that's kind of the benefit of a bot. So mm. um, those those kind of integrations are where we want to go next with the online. Um, and then there is a whole other sort of opportunity and stream of work we could do around how do we market using NOLA? You know, how do we do we um, send our receipts from NOLA? You know, our electronic receipts, or do we send our EDMs, our marketing from NOLA? Mm. Um, or do we do advertising using NOLA? Who knows? So there's lots of opportunities in that space. Um, to figure out and 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 use Nola in our in our creative suite in terms of our marketing and how we engage customers. So, yeah, yeah it, I think I was thinking earlier when one of the questions was like, one of the other reasons why we had to explore this technology is you just never know what's next um, around the corner. So if we hadn't done the in-store um, digital execution, then we wouldn't have been able to spin up the chatbot in the time that we did yeah. online. And and you know, so one kind of enabled the thinking for another and. There's been lots of other learnings we've had just in terms of how to pull the project together and how to work cross-functionally. Um, we've got great partners in the, in the suppliers that we use to, to make these things come, up, come alive and, and there's other opportunities we're exploring with those partners as well. So, you know, those are some of the other offshooting benefits of, of a project like this. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, yeah. and just last question from me. We have talked a little bit about brand and about the, the value of having um, Nola's personality uh, show up across many different channels, but um, broader than no leaming, why do you think it's important for businesses to integrate a brand aligned personality across channels and along the, the customer journey at, at different customer uh, touch points? Yeah, I think ultimately um, retail or commerce is, you know, it's on demand. It needs to be on demand now for, for consumers. So, you know, you, unless you're going to staff like a call center or stores 24-7, then a digital um, avatar or digital um, assistant can be your, your concierge when you don't have people available, you know, mm. with, with um, yeah, it, I think that, um, that that is really a key opportunity and having 24-7 available um, customer engagement. And then the other thing too is um, like making things really fast and, and, making engagements with customers as efficient as they can be there there is a place um for the digital humans bots to supplement um what what your, what your team can do you know and take the best of all your team and and have that mm -hmm. available in a in another in another method and it's not that you're going to take all customers to it it's just that customers get the choice of going through that channel or through another channel um so i, I think that's where you know, businesses, commerce needs to just think about how their customers want to engage, when are they available to engage, and how do these technologies help to support um, those, those questions. Dylan, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, for this interview. I know that the people watching this will no doubt have questions um, and have gotten a lot of value out of this today. So thank you once again. 
My pleasure.